Hey, welcome to the Friends You Can Grow With podcast. I am Matt Nespri. I'm Casey Placencia. And together with us in studio, we have Miss Billy Hunt. She is one of the staff pastors here at the Ark. Billy, tell us just a little bit about yourself while you're here. Well, I am on staff. I'm one of the staff pastors and uh, been here. We were trying to decide how long I've been here. It seems like forever, but probably a little over 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is that I trained under John Osteen, was in Lakewood Church for 27 years, did women's conferences, had a television show for seven years, and I've just done a lot of things. I ministered overseas in Russia and France and several at Nicaragua, lots of places, exciting. And um, then as I got older, uh, we started attending here. We left mm -hmm. Lakewood. My husband fell in love with this church while I was traveling. This was closer to home, so mm -hmm. he would come here. And he discovered you had a golf team. Anybody <laughs> watching that plays golf, you might want to join yeah. this church. Right. And, <laughs> so we came, and uh, Alan and I had been on staff at the same time at Lakewood, so we knew each other well. And I'd been subbing for him when he was out occasionally. So he invited me to come on staff. At first, I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Lord really began to talk to me about it. I was really tired of flying every weekend mm -hmm. somewhere. And the Lord spoke to me. I think this is important for people to know. I, um, I enjoyed traveling, but the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, when you traveled, I gave you a word for the conference, mm -hmm. a word for the church. Mm -hmm. But now what I really want you to do is concentrate on making disciples, mm -hmm. yeah. staying with the people, really uh, growing with them and you know friends you can grow with and this church is really strong on the word mm -hmm. so it was a perfect church for me to land in mm -hmm. for my semi-retirement days yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love that you talk about how you felt like um God really called you here and and maybe called you to take a step away from traveling and I think that fits mm -hmm. so good hand in hand with what we're talking about yeah. today what we're going to be covering in this series, which is a class you've taught several times for mm -hmm. several years here, um, it's on hearing the voice of God. So can you give us a little bit of a background of kind of how this class came to be, kind of the heart behind it, what led to you forming it? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Alan asked me to teach on it, but it was this is something that I've taught over the years, and it's grown. We uh, The first time we taught here, we do a, we do we always do manuals. And the first time, uh, it was a it was a nice manual, mm -hmm. and the second time it was a thicker manual. Mm -hmm. If I continue to teach it, it may become <laughs> like a dictionary. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But because the Lord, there's so much to say about hearing God's voice, mm -hmm. and the longer you walk with Him, I've walked with Him for 79 years. So walking with the Lord a long time, you really learn how the Lord communicates to us, yeah. and how we can in turn properly communicate with him mm -hmm. to accomplish what he's every person has a destiny mm. you have a destiny you have a destiny mm -hmm. every person watching has a destiny david wrote that before the foundation of the earth god wrote down every day of his life in a book there have been so many times i've stopped and i said oh lord how much of your plan have i blown have mm -hmm. i missed and the lord really dropped in my heart one day i i am light and I travel fast, I can catch you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, there's so much for us to do, but we can't do it correctly or effectively if we don't know how to hear from God. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I love that. And um, I know I've went through the class when I was first on staff. Um, so I am excited to see the, the updates and get a refresher <laughs> on it. Um, so with that, I think it's a great time. Let's, let's dive in. And, yeah. and where do we start when we are talking about hearing the voice of God? Um, where do we start? I think we answer some questions. The first question I think that we need to maybe talk about all three of us is, is God talking today? Mm -hmm. Is God, I have a scripture in Jeremiah 22, 21 that says, I spoke to you in your times of prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. Mm -hmm. This has been your attitude from your youth, you have not obeyed my voice. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I know the Lord is speaking to every person. Mm -hmm. He's not too busy to talk to you, but mm -hmm. the question is, are you listening? And we might want to discuss what are things that keep us from listening to the voice of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's so interesting. I think um, one thing I think about when we talk about hearing the voice of God and you mentioning that, that scripture that says um, you're, the people aren't listening mm -hmm. is the distractions come to mind. Yeah. And just so many things are vying for attention nowadays. 
um, whether it's, you know, work, bills, job, family, whatever it is. Um, I, I find it, at least in my life when I feel like maybe there's a bit more silence um, that it tends to be because of distractions mm-hmm. and things that are trying to grab my attention. Yeah. yeah. I think also the line in your times of prosperity, mm. most people really see God, listen for God when they have a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've noticed that every time I have a big problem, I go to God. But if it's like a small problem, day to day bumps in the road, I tend to just, oh, I don't want to bother God bother God with that. I'll just keep it to myself. I'll figure it out on my own. So, yeah. Yeah. And and also in our busy culture, people are pursuing, uh, you know, it's mm-hmm. just amazing to me uh, the the wealth that's all around us. Mm-hmm. Young people, they get their college education, they jump right into business. They they wrap themselves up in their in their home and their children. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it is difficult to slow down enough Mm -hmm. to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to train ourselves to hear God's voice. We really do. Mm -hmm. But if we'll listen, he says that he will prosper us. um, And he tells us why he wants to talk to us in Deuteronomy 436 in the Amplified Bible. I love this scripture. Out of heaven, God made you hear his voice. He made you, (laughs) forced (laughs) you to hear his voice. God made you hear his voice. This is why, that he might correct you that he might discipline you, that he might admonish you. And on earth, he made you see his great fire and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. Hmm. So from that, I have several different reasons. He speaks to us to correct us when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture in, uh, I think it's in Timothy, that says the Bible is given by inspiration and it's Mm -hmm. profitable for correction. So he corrects us through his word. Mm -hmm. But he also corrects us through the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Mm -hmm. You know, he that is born of God no longer gets away with sin because the Holy Spirit's in him. And he corrects us. Yeah. So that's one reason. He also speaks to us to discipline us so we will do it correctly. We Mm -hmm. discipline on our children so that our children... Well, you've got a, a beautiful baby, and, <laughs> and I know you discipline that little child. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a grandson. We discipline him. What mm-hmm. should you do? What you shouldn't do? And God wants to help us mm-hmm. with that, to discipline us. And he wants to speak to us to admonish and encourage us. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah. yeah. Don't you yeah. think that's important? I Definitely. think two things come to mind with that scripture you just mentioned. Um, I see a, some people who have the mindset that focus on the first two in that verse of of God wants to speak to correct and discipline. And maybe they have this view of God as like this, almost like a taskmaster who Mm -hmm. when he does want to speak, it's all like you're doing something wrong, you're doing Mm -hmm. something bad. Um, And that can, in my opinion, cause people to tune him out a little bit or maybe shy away. I mean, think about it. If you go to somebody and all they do is, you're doing something wrong, you're doing something bad, Mm -hmm. it kind of makes you apprehensive to go to them. What would you say to people with maybe that mindset or even kind of religious upbringing that was Mm -hmm. around? Well, I think that you that's important because a lot of people feel like he only talks about what he wants us to do to carry out his plan. And Mm -hmm. that is not true. He talks to us about everything. He wants to guide us along the best path for our life. The Bible tells us that if we'll find it and, and read it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the next two things in that verse that he wants to admonish us and encourage us. And the final things he wants to speak to us to guide us along the best path for our life. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. as you read about the Kings, as you read the Old Testament and you read how God worked in life, it wasn't all just about his covenant. Mm-hmm. He blessed them. He, he made them prosperous because they served him. Mm. And so he, it's for our personal well-being as well as the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And the more you talk to him, the more you discover he's a loving father. Mm-hmm. He never gets impatient. He never he just waits for you to come to him. He's the most wonderful. I, there's Why anybody would not want to serve God is a mystery to me. It's yeah. because they don't know him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's not far removed. Yeah. He's very near us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's great. So with that kind of in mind, I guess, do you have a first step now that we kind of, you know, I think we would all agree at this table, God speaks, you mm-hmm. know, he speaks to yeah. us. Um, 
how though how, how yeah. does he speak yeah, yeah that's how do we different. get there yeah and you know i think what this is another thing that may make us make pause so many times when people say god talk to me or god that we think they hear a, an audible voice mm -hmm. quite frankly i've never heard the audible voice yeah. of god mm -hmm. i wouldn't it would probably frighten me i'd fall out <laughs> <laughs> but he does speak to me mm -hmm. and and i've learned to hear his voice and so i think that that uh we shouldn't be afraid of it, but we should know the different ways. In the Old Covenant, in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, it says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to us by the prophets. That's how he communicated with people in the hmm. Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, it was by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, who has he's appointed heir of all things. So in the Old Testament, <coughs> and he spoke through fire and he spoke through that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But today he speaks to us through his word mm -hmm. yeah. and he's been, well, I, I have several ways and, and, and we'll, maybe we'll talk about them and then we'll enlarge on them as we go along. But to me, God <laughs> speaks to me most through his word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually the, the Greek for that, for word is logos mm -hmm. and it means the expression of thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Bible is God's expression of thought. It's his plan for the mm -hmm. universe. And if we will read it on a consistent basis and read it as a love letter from God, we will begin to decipher the messages he has in it for mm -hmm. us. He, from the very beginning to the very ending, is that amazing? And he's kept this Bible for us. How many wicked people have tried to destroy it? Mm -hmm. But it's still here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God's plan through the ages is important, not just so he could write a history book, or a, a science fiction book, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this is God's plan for the ages, and yeah. in it is instruction for us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the word, then there's another word, that our little English word, W-O-R-D, there are two words mm -hmm. in, the, in the Greek. The other one is rhema, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that means the revealed, spoken word of God. So as you read the logos, and, and we're going to talk about uh, and a little later on in our podcast, we're going to talk about how to effectively read your Bible so you can hear the mm -hmm. voice of God. But as you read the logos, the general expression of God's thoughts, occasionally, and it can be more than just uh, occasionally, it can be every day, mm -hmm. you can actually hear God giving you instruction or leading you, and that's called a rhema. Mm -hmm. And that's a revealed, spoken word of God. Many years ago, before I started teaching, uh, an evangelist came to our church, and we were having lunch with that evangelist. And that evangelist said, at the time I was leading worship, I was a worship leader, wasn't teaching at all. And the evangelist said to me, God is going to use you to teach, mm -hmm. and you're going to teach by revelation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that, and he said, you won't know what that means till it happens. Mm -hmm. And it, I did, I was just teaching along one day. And I had my little notes, but I was teaching with the word in my notes. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I saw something in the word I'd never seen before. It mm -hmm. opened yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've realized what it means for the Lord to reveal, to give you yeah. a rhema from yeah. his word, to open his word. And that could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. I wasn't teaching at all. Yeah. You know, just Sunday school type teaching when that began to happen to me. And I began to see in the word of God the potential for every believer. Mm -hmm. Wow. You've mentioned a couple of times um, the way God spoke under the old covenant and the new covenant. Is there any way you can kind of expound on that? Why? First off, what do we mean when we talk about old covenant, new covenant? What what really does that mean? And then why is there diff this difference between how God spoke then, how God speaks to us now, mm -hmm. um, and really what led to that? Well, when we, when we talk about Old Covenant and New Covenant, if you have a King James Bible or a complete Bible, you have an Old Testament and a New Testament. Mm -hmm. And the Old Testament covers the time up till the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, our mm -hmm. Savior. So up to that time, the, the Holy Spirit wasn't in people. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit would come upon them as we all know. Well, we may not all, but there's a wonderful story of Samson in the Bible mm -hmm. where the Holy yeah. Spirit would come on him and he would do exploits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in the Old Testament, and we can name the prophets, you know, Elijah, Elisha, all of the wonderful. There are major prophets and minor prophets. You know the difference in a major prophet and a minor prophet? I do. Do you, do you know yeah, the difference? It's the good. size, right, of the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, the size of the book. Major prophets are thick books. Mm -hmm. Minor mm -hmm. prophets are thin books. Mm -hmm. And and so, the, you know, through the prophets. But 
when Jesus came, he is the word of God. Mm. And so he came, he died, he conquered death, hell, and grave. He rose again. He ascended into heaven. Then he did the most wonderful thing. He said, go and wait. And I want you to wait until I send my spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, we spoke in that scripture I read about God speaking through the fire. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit came, the very same spirit Jesus had as he walked the earth, he came with fire. Mm -hmm. And he he actually entered into the people. Now, Mm -hmm. when we receive Jesus Christ, we're born again by the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have an opportunity to grow in our relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by old covenant and new covenant. And he spoke through the prophets in the old, but in the New Testament, through his son, through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit opening his word to us so mm-hmm. we can understand the word. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in the in the old covenant, the old testament, we saw you mentioned that Rhema um revelation of God speaking. That happened primarily through prophets because um even though many, you know, Jewish people had the Bible, though as you said, the Holy Spirit wasn't in everyone but now it sounds like you're saying with what jesus did for us on the cross and the spirit dwelling in us we all can have that kind of rhema god speaking to us experience is that that's is that what you're absolutely, telling me absolutely that's absolutely every believer if you have been born of, of god if you have received christ as your personal savior then you were born again the bible tells us we were born again by the holy spirit mm-hmm. so you have the holy spirit every yeah. Every born again believer. Now, not every born again believer is baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that mm-hmm. word baptized means to be dyed as a garment. Mm. I, I think the best way to explain it is uh, an Episcopal priest said this to me one time. When I was born again, I got the Holy Spirit. When I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he got me. Hmm. Mm. And so, you know, we have mm. the Holy Spirit, but when we learn to yield to him, to let him really began to lead us and guide us and talk to us. There's an experience that happens Mm -hmm. where we learn to yield to him completely. And we call that the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. um, Yeah. So with that, some some things come to mind. I remember growing up, um, I grew up in a very charismatic um, AG church. um, And I, you know, would, I recall times of people would stand up during a worship service and say, thus saith the Lord. Um, Where does that fit in with, or is that something we'll cover maybe in a later podcast episode, but where does that fit in with hearing the voice of God? And is that a a type of a rhema thing or? It's it's not covered in the particular teaching that that we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. It's on a personal level. But that is the charismatic gift of prophecy that's mentioned in Corinthians. Mm. And it belongs to the Holy Spirit. I also was raised in an Assembly of mm. God church. <laughs> and so that was familiar to me. Yeah. And, it was, and actually what that is, is uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to someone. And, uh, and it's just an overwhelming feeling. You know that, that you need to, to share what mm. the Holy Spirit yeah. is mm-hmm. saying. And it's a great blessing. And there have been times when I've been in services where the Holy Spirit said, just something that there's no way that person could have known Mm -hmm. and but they express it so yeah it's a we all have the potential to be used by the holy spirit and it really doesn't have to be just in a church service Mm -hmm. i I don't know about uh standing up and giving a message that saith the lord (laughs) but there have been many times when i was praying for someone Mm -hmm. and the holy spirit would tell me something and Mm -hmm. i would share it and they would yes that's true you know and it's the lord letting them know he knew and he cared yeah. So, yeah, those gifts can operate. They're they're designed. Some of them are designed specifically for the church, and but a lot of them are designed for the believer to walk in every day. Mm-hmm. And they're for us. Yeah. yeah. But I think before you can do that, you have to learn to basically hear the voice of God. Yeah. yeah. And let Him talk to you. Yeah. And as you said, that starts with for there, us in the new covenant, His Word. Yeah. Right. There are four basic ways that that in this little first session that we'll talk about, the first one is the Word of God, Mm -hmm. the written Word of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to read it. Mm. It doesn't come by osmosis. (laughs) You have to to read it. Uh, But the second one, and and we'll go over all of these in in depth, the second one is from counsel, from friends or Mm. from leaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, as we're talking today, there may be somebody listening and we may say something, 
that will really speak to their need or, mm -hmm. or it'll be like the voice of God. It is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Many times in a church service, the pastor has been preaching along a prepared message. He certainly didn't say, oh, I'm going to put something in this for Billy Hunt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, But he will say something mm -hmm. that really yeah. speaks to me, gives me guidance, yeah. encourages me, uh, you know, all of those things that the voice of God is supposed to do. The third is circumstances. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us through circumstances. Yeah. He does not bring all the circumstances in our life, but certainly he teaches us, he leads us, he guides us, through the circumstances that we experience. And the final one, and we'll talk a lot about this one, is the inner voice of God to your heart, mm -hmm. where God just drops something in your heart. And we'll talk about how that how that works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, you might want to uh, zero in on some of these and talk about your experiences with hearing the Lord's voice in, in situations of these fourth. You may have a different yeah. one. You know, there's... No, I love that. Um, I think, you know, the first one being the word, I think we have the benefit of living in a, a day and age where it's, uh, I would say for most of us, accessible whenever, <laughs> wherever, um, whenever we need it, it's at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, my experience has been, it can be easy to take that for granted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we read stories of people who have risked their lives to preserve the Bible we have, you yeah. know, it being illegal back in the day. And now we have it at our fingertips. I sometimes can take it for granted. Do you have tips for um, really keeping the word a priority? Because I, yeah. I think that that is such a great key for believers to understand that one of the ways God speaks to you is how he's already spoken. Do you have tips mm -hmm. for that? Or do you have any tips or experiences with how that has worked in your life? Um, I feel like really just zeroing in on like focusing on the word. It's, it can be a struggle sometimes. Like how do you, um, like how do you focus on just the word and not get distracted mm. like super easily. We're gonna, you know, we're going to do a whole session on that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're just teasing it out. Now. Yeah. You're yeah. teasing it out. You're yeah. trying yeah. to get me to jump ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not going to work, yeah. is it? No, it'll work a little bit. Yeah. You, everybody need, everybody needs a mm -hmm. devotional time. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. needs you. There are no exceptions to that. Well, yeah. I go to church. I don't need devotions. Mm. Yes. You need devotions mm -hmm. because you need, you need to hear the voice of God every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, I, you need a time, and uh, we'll talk about this, and we'll really get into depth later. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you sit down to read the Word, and I sometimes, I do it different ways. Well, I do 365. We have that wonderful mm -hmm. reading plan mm -hmm. here, yeah. a Bible 365. Mm -hmm. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on one of our apps. And we're reading the Bible together. Mm -hmm. Then it gives you an Old Testament, a New Testament, a psalm and a proverb, mm -hmm. not in that order, a proverb and a psalm. <laughs> psalm. Sorry about that. <laughs> and, but it, it gives you an opportunity. You know, if you just say, okay, I'm going to read my Bible every day, you will tend to read your favorite parts yeah. mm -hmm. or a psalm. Mm -hmm. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to read psalms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only don't turn to Psalms 119 because that's the <laughs> longest chapter in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but a psalm. But, uh, but you need an organized way mm -hmm. to read. My husband has, since the day he committed his life to the Lord in 1989, he has read the Bible through every year. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got wow. him a one year. We read the Bible the, the year before he came to Christ. The Lord spoke to me to get a one year Bible and read the Bible as a family. And we did. And it brought him to Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then since then, every, and now he reads a one year Bible and 365 mm -hmm. every day, every yeah. day. But when you do that, whatever your Bible reading plan is, you need to have several things. You need to keep a journal, and we'll talk about mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. And I and either a calendar or a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and this is why you keep the piece of paper. When you sit down to study the Bible and pray, I promise you, you will get distracted. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're a woman, it, you'll think about, oh, I meant to put those clothes right. in the washing mm -hmm. machine. Right. Right. And if you get up and do that, you may not come back, mm -hmm. but if you just write down, put the clothes in the washing machine on your little piece of paper mm -hmm. or whatever you need to do on that piece of paper, it takes it out of your mind, out of the distraction point yeah. of your mind, mm -hmm. puts it on that paper. You know that when I finish, mm -hmm. then I can go do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, that's, that's yeah. one of the main things. Yeah. And so you, you need a place, you need to be quiet. 
I don't even, I love to worship with music, but I don't like to read my Bible with music mm -hmm. yeah. because it distracts me yeah. mm -hmm. because I'm a vocalist and I'll find myself singing instead of <laughs> reading the Bible. So, so I don't, I don't do that, but you just need to get us all of that out of, turn off the TV, mm -hmm. put the dog out, you know, whatever you need to yeah. do to create a quiet time yeah. so you can have a quiet conversation. Think of it as uh, an intimate conversation with your best friend or your mate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you don't want a lot of distractions mm -hmm. when you're trying to have an intimate conversation with someone. Yeah. You want to be able to listen and to talk. You know, if while we were talking here around this table, there were people dancing and singing around us, mm -hmm. it would be very distracting. Yeah. 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 So it's the same when you're with God. Yeah. 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 So. Does that help a little bit? Yes. Um, yeah, every morning I sit down and I try to focus on the word I put my do not disturb on. Um, and there there have been times where I do get really into it and I do get a lot from, from what I'm reading. Um, like the other day with Bible 365, um, I it was talking about how Apollos, or the, how oh, it was 1 Corinthians, I think it's 3... Three six. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about how God planted the seed in our heart and Apollos watered it. That's been a big verse in my life, and I kind of forgot about it for a few months. But the other day when it came back up, it it really touched me again mm -hmm. to really focus on that. Yeah, we water it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I uh, I hope I'm not criticized for this. Uh, sometimes when I'm getting ready for work, thank goodness for for telephones that we can. Listen, mm -hmm. and I will put my 365 and listen. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, but it's, you know, it's any way you can get the word in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do have to say that when I'm just listening, I'm not going to be as inspired. Yeah. Yeah. But there are times when I'll stop it and back it up and listen mm -hmm. again, stop it and back it up and yeah. listen again. Mm -hmm. and, and because the Lord is saying something to me and, mm -hmm. I'm, and I want to get it. Yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. miss it. Yeah. So there, it, just do it. You know, yeah. just do it. So what, yeah. This Sunday in church, yeah. just do it. That's what the it. sermon was. But that you just have to do it. You just yeah. have to absolutely mm -hmm. do it. But it's yeah. important. It's important. What do you think about the God speaking to you in circumstances? Can you think of a circumstance in your life when God really spoke to you? Yeah, yes. when you when you said that, it made me think of um, the Screw Tape Letters by C.F. Lewis. Have yeah. you ever wrote, yeah. read that? Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things he talks about is how humans have these peaks and valleys and how mm. God often speaks to us more in the valleys yeah, than in the peaks. Definitely. Um, and I know in my life, um, I can name multiple hardships where God has really spoken to me. Mm -hmm. I think of when we were, uh, my wife was pregnant with our daughter and just so many medical complications um, and just really feeling like God speaking to me that he was there with us um psalm 91 was a big one i held on to through all that um and really just feeling like you know there there are those moments where um it feels like life can be hitting you the hardest and if you lean into it that's where you feel like god has you wrapped up the tightest you know mm -hmm. at least in my experience yeah um there was definitely times back in high school, which wasn't that long ago for me, but because um, you're like 16, 19, 19 okay. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what well I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were definitely times where I felt alone, um, and that's when I really clung on to God. I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life, um, like if I was gonna go to college, if I went to college, what I would do, um, and so I just felt alone and just confused on what to do. And so that's when I really clung on to God and his word. And I just felt him saying, like, you know, I have a plan for you. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and now I'm here, like out of high school for about a year and have a full-time job, <laughs> which is so nice. But yeah, definitely being alone, I really clung on to God. And that was, I, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of friends, like we've talked about it recently that, when they were alone, that's when they really heard God because you have no distractions. It's just you and him. You get to sit with the word, sit with him, worship with him, hmm. and you really get a lot out of it. And I definitely did. I think probably uh, when I think back, well, I think of many times when the Lord spoke to me, but I, I think of uh, with our uh, with our situation uh, when we moved here, when we lived in a little town, had a little house, and um, 
we had an opportunity to build. So we were in the process of getting ready to build our dream house. Mm -hmm. And we had saved and we were, you know, we're going to put our little house on the market, sell our little house and move to our dream house. And we, I was ministering in Louisiana and they called me and said, a tornado has come through your neighborhood and it has hit your house. Hmm. Oh. And I thought, what? A tornado in our neighborhood? Are you kidding me? Yeah. So we got in the car and we drove home and it was two in the morning when we got into our little subdivision and the police were there. You had to show identification to even get in. They had to escort you to your house. Wow. It was very dark. And um, we went in the house and all the windows were blown out. There was debris all in the house. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the house was standing. But the, And I didn't realize the significance of that till the next mm. morning when the sun came up and you stepped out in the front of our house, all you saw were foundations. Mm. It had completely destroyed oh my in front and behind us, just wow. foundations. And, and I'm standing in our yard, and I'm looking at that, and I said to the Lord, how in the world will we sell this house in this mess? <laughs> and not out loud, but it was one of the loudest things the Lord ever said to me. He said, it'll be a miracle, won't it? And I said back to him out loud, that is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> God has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. And I turned around to go back in the house. And, and he said to my heart, you won't have to sell this house. Well, I, that, to me, that was impossible. Mm -hmm. that was, and I wrote in my journal, my prayer journal, I believe I heard God say we would not have to sell this house. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we did not have to sell that house. God yeah. got it miraculously gave us the money to pay down on our house and hmm. that we we kept that house for 16 years and the rent from that house paid our taxes wow. on our new house wow. but the lord spoke to me about it in a time of crisis when i was yeah. mm -hmm. overwhelmed hmm. what in the yeah. world are we going to do and yeah. it, very lightly it'll be a miracle won't it yeah <laughs> you know and and so <laughs> sometimes when the lord speaks to you he just loves you he's he's going to speak to you just like we would talk to mm -hmm. one another and, but his plan was not anything that I suspected. Mm -hmm. So he does. He talks to us in the middle yeah. of circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and like you were just saying, he um, one of the ways you, he talks to us is through other people, through other yeah. um, conversations. Um, I know that there have been times in my life where I've had, uh, whether it be a sermon or or a mentor, come come alongside me and and say, you know, hey, I really feel like the Lord is is telling me to tell you this mm -hmm. or. Um, and give some guidance. Where do we see that um, in the Bible? Well, we can see it. That's a good question. <laughs> Let's see. Let me look through my notes. Now, there's there's lots of times mm -hmm. in the Bible where, uh, and and there are times when, uh, when I, I'm thinking right now of Paul and Silas. I think mm -hmm. it was Silas where they got in an argument mm -hmm. about John. John, mm -hmm. And uh, Paul didn't want to take him because he was a mama's boy and mm -hmm. kind of wealthy mm -hmm. and it was kind of tough where they were going. He wanted to go back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, but so they, they separated mm -hmm. because Silas heard from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then there's the, uh, the many times in the book of Acts, if you read, you'll find that the Holy Spirit speaking to people, uh, the man from Macedonia, the, the vision, come over here and help us. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter on the rooftop mm -hmm. when he's hungry mm -hmm. and the Lord sends a trance and he, uh, he, the Lord is showing him that he needs to go to the Gentiles mm -hmm. he, to eat what is unclean. Mm -hmm. And so, all, you know, there are lots of times. Then there are times when people encouraged people. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I think of, uh, uh, is it is it Deborah? Yeah, it's, no, it's not Deborah. It's uh, Esther, Queen Esther. Mm -hmm. When uh, when her uncle, Mordecai, Mordecai mm -hmm. spoke to her and said, this is what the Lord wants you to do. Mm -hmm. You have to save your people. You're mm -hmm. the one. And she said, well, if I die, I die. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but yeah. fast and pray. I'll, yeah. I'll do it if you mm -hmm. say the Lord told me to do it. So, but you do have to, when people give you a word, mm -hmm. you really have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have, and I believe this, I believe in our contemporary society, when the, when the, the Lord will speak to you about something before he'll have somebody else come to you and tell you, for instance, mm -hmm. if you came to me and said, the Lord says you should go to Africa and be a missionary, I would know immediately that was not the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May have been your good intention, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the Lord because mm -hmm. he hadn't said anything to me about it. Yeah. I didn't feel uh, anything in my spirit when you said it. 
but uh, there's and and the thing like about ministering in Revelation when that was given to me, mm-hmm. it was I I did not say oh yay I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. I put it aside mm-hmm. and I waited to see if it was the Lord, mm-hmm. and I looked in the Word to to check it out with the Lord. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have to be careful with people giving you, but yeah. it happens. Mm-hmm. Just like the guy standing up in church and prophesying. Yeah, yeah. all all prophecy. You're not supposed to judge the prophet. But you judge the prophecy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it is from the Lord, if it lines up with the word, if it comes to pass, yeah. then it's from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. so what it sounds like you're saying is that God is still speaking. Oh, yeah. Even today in multiple ways to mm-hmm. all of us. Not only that he is speaking, he wants to speak. The key is for us to learn how to listen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what we're going to be covering throughout this, this mm-hmm. podcast series here. Um, and this is the end of our first time. Uh, wow, it that flew was by. <laughs> yeah, it really it flew by. Um, but a lot of great takeaways, Casey. What what gathering at, at this table? What have you gathered that you kind of is sticking with you, or, or you you are interested to learn more about? Um, I'm interested to learn more about like how he, how we know when what he's speaking to us like what is true and uh, how you were just saying if it lines up with the bible because mm. yeah. i've definitely <laughs> i have yeah. some input on that too yeah. yeah i i'm with case on that i love hearing um hearing god speaking but then how do we um you know the bible says test and approve the yeah. the will and the word of yeah. god i grew up we always had the the saying, speaking of Gideon, throw your fleece out on that. You, did you hear? <laughs> Brother yeah. Hagen, senior, uh-huh. used to say, if you try to get a fleece before the Lord, you could get fleeced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that has always been something I'm interested in, is has learning how to tell if it's the voice of God, if that dream was of God or, yeah, or the pizza yeah, I definitely. ate. So um, <laughs> I'm very excited and, and interested to learn more about that as we dive in. And I hope that you guys are excited and interested to learn more about hearing the voice of God. So make sure you join us next time for another session of hearing the voice of God with uh, me, Casey, and Miss Billy Hunt.